F. Uh, Sri Banerjee, who's a core faculty at Walden University College of Health Center. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Very well. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, th thank you for having me. Um, uh, another year of um, GIS Day um, lightning talks at uh, Johns Hopkins University. Um, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee. Um, you know, I, I was here last year as well. And um, it, th this year, I as I was trying to think about what to prepare um, the talk about, um, I, I, I was debating, you know, because I've been working on several projects um, with my colleagues um, regarding some geospatial considerations. And um, I, I was thinking maybe something different, but um, what, what I decided is that um, the multi-scale geographic, uh, geographically weighted regression um, is so powerful. Um, it's such a nice tool to use, um, especially when there are um, variations to be uh, considered. And so I'm going to go into um, a little bit about the multi-scale geographically weighted regression um, that I used in this project. Um, so just going down what the objectives um, we'll be going over, um, you know, applying the OLS regression and spatial models um, to explore impact of location. So just traditionally geographically weighted, weighting um, how that helps um, regression models um, in terms of predictive accuracy, things like that. Um, and also, also comparing the model fitting. Um, so I'll be showing you comparisons of the Akaiki information criteria. Um, for uh, model diagnostics, comparing several types of models. Um, so, so I'm trying to then draw the connection between how you make a map and then how you apply that to policy implications. After all, with the pandemic, you know, a couple of things have really emerged. Um, one is the importance of policy for public health, um, but also the importance of equity um, and, and, and the importance of understanding social disparities um, in the context of social determinants of health. Um, and, you know, I would argue that mapping is a powerful tool um, to be able to um, study social determinants of health. So I'm going to go in, more into that. And uh, the multi-scale geographically weighted um, regression model is perfect um, for understanding some of the parameters and complexity of, of social determinants of health. Um, so if we could go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so, um, you know, there's not a lot going on here, but um, I started off with kind of a general map understanding the distribution of breast cancer. Um, so, um, again, this technique is being applied to uh, breast cancer incidence rates. Um, so, the, um, the, the model, actually, the, the eventual model um, was using um, age-adjusted incidence rates um, of, of breast cancer. Um, so that was what was being modeled um, as the outcome-dependent uh, variable. Now, the um, independent variables, uh, there were several um, that that were um, loaded into the model, um, one of which was the number of heat, you know, the number of days of heat. Um, so, you know, um, heat waves, things like that, does that make a difference um, when we're thinking about cancer epidemiology? Um, in terms of, you know, particulate matter, um, inhaling particulate matter, last year I had presented on lung cancer, and of course, you know, you would uh, naturally think that there's an association, but not, I was trying to look for, you know, there's an association with breast cancer. And so um, the findings demonstrated that, in fact, there were significant um, associations when you applied this uh, multi-scale geographically weighted regression. Um, and so some of the um, summary estimates have been provided on, on, on the screen. Um, however, there are local level um, estimates that then are mapped um, in order to then uh, demonstrate um, where policies can be uh, placed. Um, so tailored policies can be created here. So if we can go on to the final slide, um, I can kind of explain all of this. 
So, um, you know, I, I said a couple of things. Um, one is that not only were the predictors um, uh, significant, and, and so, again, uh, just going over the predictors, um, there were four predictors, um, poverty rate, um, there was the Gini index. So Gini index is a robust uh, measure for income inequity, which is um, a little bit better better than just, you know, looking at um, uh, just looking at poverty rate. And then, of course, uh, particulate matter. And then I went over the number of heat days. So th these were all um, significant. But what was more important is the fact that um, how well did the model predict? You know, how, what was what, how um, how well did it perform? And I did I'd say at the beginning that I was going to tell you about the um, Akaiki um, information criteria. So, you know, when we looked at the global scale, not, you know, really taking into consideration um, some of this weighting, then um, the value um, ended up being um, a little over 2000, right? So, uh, the smaller the value, the uh, the better the model model is um, uh, fitting. So, um, if we looked at the then model two, um, which traditional used traditional geographic weighted regression, um, then I actually had did not include the value there, but it was actually eighteen thirty six point five. Then model three, including multi scale geographic weighted regression, that was seventeen ninety eight point six. So um, definitely. Uh, functioning better. And so the implications of this is the fact that at a local level, um, we can create tailored interventions um, that are more predictive of certain diseases uh, than others. So for breast cancer incidence, if there are certain variables that are more applicable um, at a community level, then interventions may be tailored towards those. And we can bring in things like Healthy People 2030 and others to try to understand um, how to guide these. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, so we don't have too much time. Uh, I don't think that there were too many uh, questions, but I do want to give a chance, maybe if anyone has a question or if they want to bring up one up now. <laughs> 